this is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today I'm joined by Jeremy Garlick, the director and producer, and Jordan Van Diemen, the writer of the all-new Hulu comedy, The Binge. It's a coming-of-age teenage comedy that has a lot of crazy situations and, and a long journey as these kids kind of try to take part in their first binge. It's a really funny movie, and we're going to talk to them very quickly, but first, let's check out the trailer. Good morning, American High. America, a few years from now, prosperous, clean, and sober, except one night a year when all drugs and alcohol are legal. For you seniors, you will be able to participate in your first binge. Let's say your name's Kimberly Jones, and let's say you binged on a jet ski, which exploded into flames. She's here tonight. Can you guys guess which one she is? I'll give you a hint. You're cold, getting warmer, getting warmer, red hot, burning hot. She's the one who looks like a mummy. Mm. This is our last chance to make a great memory. Seven, six. Tonight, we become legends. Five, three, look, we go to that party. You look Lena in the eyes and tell her exactly what you wanted to tell her your entire life. Ah, let's go. Ah, wait. We'll give you a ride if you punch each other in the face. What? We'll do it. One, two. To our first sip of alcohol. <laughs> Another round? Absolutely. Go, go, go. I'll have some celery sticks. What's up, man? How you All doing? Right. So let's, should we start with uh, with a cheers? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Cheers. Bahama. Cheers. Thanks to the for binge. Boom. Thank to you. To the binge. So... This movie, uh, it, it's a very funny movie. I, I love the premise. It's uh, clearly inspired by The Purge. Um, but, uh, you know, were there other, other inspirations? Or was this just kind of, I don't know, maybe you were drinking one evening and thought about The Purge and thought, well, what if we had other options? Like, I guess, what was the impetus for this movie? Exactly. Well, I, as all great artists do, I start from the title and work backwards. So I had a website <laughs> called Weekend Scripts where I would release like parody scripts that I would write over a weekend and I knew they couldn't get made. Um, but I was like, oh, what if I try one that could get made? And I had never seen The Purge, but I saw the trailer. So I knew the concept and then came up with a binge and uh, took it from there. And look at us now. Yeah, there you go. Breaking no, on a Zoom during a pandemic. I love that, that the idea just kind of like you know, started on a whim and just kind of built itself out and I, you added more and more things to it. That's it. What, what, what's, what, one of the things that you just mentioned, Jordan, was um, just that you never saw The Purge. And um, <laughs> I had actually never seen The Purge. And I remember we watched, we started watching it together, like once we already started. I don't remember if it was like right before we started shooting or, or like once we started before, shooting. Yeah. But I think what's, what is you know, people are like, oh, it's the purge meets super bad, or it's like, it's the purge, but funny. Um, <laughs> and I think that we were both, you know, I was drawn to the concept because it's just a funny concept, but I, th but we really never set out to make a parody. Mm -hmm. And, and we just, so, and I think it's good we actually never saw the purge because, yeah. because we weren't trying to like we weren't trying to do it an airplane version of or a scary movie version of of the purge. We wanted to tell just make a really funny movie that was that's just the way in. Um, and so so yeah, congrats Jordan on on coming up with such a great idea. Well, I am the king of Hollywood. Everyone says You're, it. There we you go. are yeah. a genius. You are. I'll a tag this video, King of Hollywood. Yes, please do. Um, well, so it's interesting you say you never saw The Purge. Hollywood, definitely... Florida. <laughs> that? Hollywood, Florida. Hollywood, Florida. Very good, Jeremy. Well, I think you've said enough. We'll take it from here. <laughs> um, it's interesting you say you never saw The Purge because I, I definitely saw some parallels with the, uh, with the Purge film and some of the activities. Had you seen it when the movie started filming? Like the, uh, you know, when, when people are preparing and maybe boarding up their houses and some of the costumes seem to have Purge inspirations. Definitely the, oh, like, I, I took what was in the script from the trailer, I believe. So, like, the locking the doors and the alarms and the stuff like that, I was like, this is, this is all I need to see. Just the, the, how do they set it up and set up the world? And then me and Jeremy watched it maybe the day before we started shooting. I don't know. I don't even think we watched the whole thing, did we? No, we watched the opening to be like, well, how, what are we doing wrong? And how. Yeah. <laughs> the, the opening and, we is... were, and when we watched it, we were just like, oh, wait. Uh, we were like, oh, that was so simple. 
what they did. Yeah. So, so, I'm like, <laughs> so much better. <laughs> yeah. That, so the, uh, the opening is the best part of the, the first purge. The second purge is a, is a pretty entertaining movie, but uh, yeah. you know. You, but there's such a get, negative uh, connotation towards parody movies now that if you say like, oh, we're doing a parody, they're like, oh, you're doing some dumb like epic movie or whatever. There's so like so much negativity towards it. But I yeah. love like Airplane and Naked Gun and all that. We got to bring the parody back. Well, this is this is the start, right? This is the yeah, first step. Um, so I guess, uh, Jordan, you started writing and Jeremy, when did you kind of attach yourself? Or do you all collaborate uh, regularly or was this something that kind of you, you read the script and just wanted to jump in on that? We read the script. Uh, our team at American High read the script and just thought it was a genius script and the writing you know, we were laughing out loud from Jordan's writing from, from moment one. And that's a rare thing to have the combination of to have the combination of not just a really fun, good, simple concept, but also the ability to make me or the team laugh when you're reading a script. And Jordan just has that rare gift. Um, and we read it and, and we wanted to, to make the movie and we, I don't think, did we option? I can't remember. I, I think we just like met with Jordan. We optioned it and then we were trying to get Hulu to, to make it and then Hulu made it. And Jordan and I have not, um, a day has not passed where, uh, since then where Jordan and I are not uh, talking about 55 other ideas. Um, at, and and it's, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Uh, Hopefully more parodies, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Got a lot, lot in the bank. Uh, so one thing I also loved is the, you know, the cast was it was such a, an interesting kind of hodgepodge group of uh, of actors that I, you know you hadn't really seen in a in a major movie before. You know, where did you find them? Did you, did, uh, Jordan, did you start writing with some of these people in mind, or did they just kind of come in, you know, and and fill the slot that you had in your in your head? Well, everyone else passed. These were the only yeah, actors. That, this was the that... bottom of the barrel cast that we could get. So, I mean, we didn't have a choice, really. Um, no, Look I mean, those I really, hungry actors. <laughs> yeah, with the teens, it's like it was hard. I mean, American High knows so much better than me because they've done a bunch of these. That who are the best kids working that could pass for teenagers? And so, when I was thinking about it, I really had no one in mind. Um, obviously, I think we got the best. And with Vince, that was just an unbelievable get because of Jeremy and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Jeremy, were you picturing anyone when you were reading the script or? Um, sorry, I'm trying. I, it was so long ago. I don't even remember. I don't think I was. I mean, I think we had, we you had shot done, this 18 years ago. Yeah. So I had, I had, uh, uh, there was no Corona when we shot this. Um, I, I, I think I may have been because we had just done Big Time Adolescence with Griffin Gluck and Thomas Barbuska and we had done Banana Split. Um, I, I may have pi been picturing just the, the guys that I've worked with beforehand. Um, but, but yeah, I didn't, I, I, I'm not sure it's the same people that were in that, that ended up being in the movie. And it's, uh, you know, interesting you mentioned Vince Vaughn, you know, I, I my review hasn't been published yet because of the embargo, but, uh, you know, I wrote, it's essentially both figuratively and, li and literally a man among boys or, you know, an adult among kids. Like his performance is just fantastic. So I guess, how did he get attached and, uh, you know, how much fun was it to, I guess, film with him? Um, I'm trying to remember, Jordan, if we were in Toronto at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival or like I was on the phone. I try to remember when we like because we 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 rewrote that character to be the principal. Like to, to, we rewrote it. It was I think it was like a handful of different characters that yeah. we kind of combined as one villain. Um, and I I had worked with Vince. I, I did the the breakup with Vince that I I, I wrote and produced for him. Um, the first movie that I sold was called The Golden Tux, and and Vince was attached to 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 star in that eventually i made that and it was called the wedding ringer with josh gad and kevin hart playing the role of vince vaughn um but i've I, I had a movie with the uh you know i have another movie with with vince called the insane laws that i was gonna make at, at universal with jason bateman so i've known vince for a long time and um and and i knew that when i knew that when i got involved i wanted to um i wanted to make him this character and and jordan just did an amazing amazing job writing for Vince um, and uh, and yeah it's Jordan like we got Vince to attach himself because he read it because of our relationship but 
he said yes because of what Jordan did. So oh, thank you. Awesome. It was crazy. After he read it, he called me, Jeremy gave him my number, and it was just like the voice is so iconic. Like when I picked up the phone, I was like, Holy shit, like <laughs> I made all my favorite movies and you're just talking to him on the phone. It's really, yeah. really crazy. <laughs> but like he, I could have written nothing and he's so good at improv that like it would have been just as genius if I had no words on the page. Uh, is he as funny on on the phone as he is you know in his, in his acting persona is he just kind of like an extension of his uh characters pretty much i mean he's so yeah he, and he's so smart too and it's just like he's got all the stories from swingers and wedding crashers and old school and it's just every time you talk to him you're like that was a, the best conversation i've ever had it's crazy <laughs> uh so interesting that you mentioned that you know you could have written nothing i always kind of ask writers this because you know i know that you had the words that you wrote and and you know the, the funny situations that you put up but i guess when you got someone like vince vaughn and kind of this this comedy where i imagine there's a lot of improv and a lot of uh you know uh, retakes and things like that i guess how much was improv and how much was what you were written is it some combination of both as i imagine it must be or yeah i would say the construct of the scenes always stayed the same and then i would sit with vince the night before the morning and then he would just riff like I would just sit there and as he was going or like working through the scene, I would just type out what he was saying. And I would be like, this, please say this, like do what you were doing when we were riffing. Don't say my, so like it was a bunch of improv and all made it 10,000 times better. But I don't know. Was he, uh, I guess Vince always improvs like that. I assume. Well, it's, I mean, I think there's, there's the improv, which is somebody showing up, like there, there's actors who improv and they show up on set and they come up with a bunch of stuff on set and they're 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 working it out and they come up with funny stuff. Vince is like Vince goes through and he's a classically trained actor with you know who studied Stanislavski and he goes through a real training process for um for figuring out who the character is and a lot of what 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 um a lot of what um, what Jordan is referring to, or there's like nights in that we spent, like the, the those nights that we spent in the hotel, where he's just he's talking out loud about who the character is, trying to understand, always trying to understand what his intentions are, and he really comes from a place of I here I am, I'm the principal of this school, and what are my intentions as like being a principal. And what are my intentions in the scene? What am I trying to warn the student body about? And he really comes, like, he's, he gets into character. Like, he really gets into character. So when he's riffing, he's not riffing from a place, he's never riffing from a place of, oh, I think this would be funny. Like, you'll never see Vince Vaughn saying, oh, I think this would be funny in character. You'll see his character going to a place where and his mind works like i mean his, his, his mind works like nobody else um he'll just take take the character and go towards a direction that's all because of be because of what his objective is and um i've you know i've, I've seen him do it like you know i've seen him do it now for 20 years uh working with him and it's um you know sometimes i just sit back and just i just sit back and i, I like to watch and enjoy um, there was a scene, I, I, you, you're probably too young to remember the breakup, but there was this scene in the breakup um, that it was, it, it, we actually ended up taking it out, but it was me and Jay Lavender and we were, we, we started writing and, um, and I, and we we're living at Vince's house and I said, oh, what, what if um, Gary, that Gary and Brooke were the characters and they, um, they lived together in a condo and then they broke up and then they're trying to get the other person out of the condo. I said, what if Gary was leaving an outgoing like voice recording for anybody who calls in on the voicemail? And he was like, and he like just stopped me. He's like, and then he, he, he goes, Hi, um, this is Gary. Uh, you, re you reach Gary and Brooke. If you're looking for Gary, you can read the message here. If you're looking for Brooke, why? Like, why would you go down that road? And I like, I'm like typing, like the, I'm trying to like just type feverishly as he's like walking around, like, and it's after about five minutes of, and like three pages of the funniest stuff, I just stopped. And I was just like, you know what? 
I'm just going to sit here and take this moment in so because good. I was, just, I was just, I was like, I don't care anymore. Like this probably will never be in the movie anyway. Like I'm just going to sit here and just enjoy the fact that I'm working with somebody who's, you know, it was like watching, you know, it was watching, you know, Jimi Hendrix play, the, you know, the, or Clapton play the guitar. I was just like, I'm going to enjoy this. So yeah. Um, anyway. Sorry, that was a long answer, and I was plugging a different movie than ours. Okay. You can watch the breakup on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and big time adolescence on Hulu as well. Um, no, that that was a great story, and thank you so much for you know thinking that I was young enough to not remember the breakup. Uh, I, I do remember it. Um, so this movie, and I imagine pretty much all the movies that you guys do, you know, it seemed like it's like it'd be a very fun movie to film. I mean, I guess how. You know, how much fun was that to film or is it, is it, you know, you're in your job, you're kind of trying to make the funny situations, but everyone's kind of a professional. How, how does that work? Jordan, what do you, th- uh, you were, you were, you were there from at every moment. Um, I didn't have any fun. I was pretty much miserable <laughs> the whole time. I mean, I, it why was they, my, why are they butchering my script? Yeah, it was a nightmare seeing, seeing Vince Vaughn take my words and butcher them. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, I was my first movie that I've ever been that I a first script that I sold. So getting to be on set, a lot of writers don't get to do that. And the being in Syracuse where people aren't like affected by the film industry and like a lot of times in LA people are like, You're making a movie, so what? So am I. Uh but being in Syracuse, people are still excited about it and everyone's so cool and so nice and it's like an event. And it I was living with Jeremy and Will, the producer, and it just felt like a family while you're making it. And so for me, there's no pressure. I mean, I did the thing, I wrote the script, the pressure's really on Jeremy now. So I had the best time and we would eat these chicken riggies. Uh, uh, that's a food, a pasta with chicken. What a blast. So yeah, every day for me was incredible. Um, and it seemed like everyone else was having fun, but what do I know? Who cares about everyone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a, I really did have a good time. Um, I, I really enjoyed I really, really enjoyed the writing process with with Jordan and and getting to know Jordan was um, was just such a you know, such a blessing during this time. And he became a, a really good friend and um, and um, and and actually, I, I thought this would be a good opportunity. Jordan, remember I said I, I I got you a present. Yeah. And I forgot to give it to you. Um, I may as well do this on on the show. Um, okay. Excuse so. Me. Yeah, so this is we um you now have an official Jordan at American High dot com email. Oh wow. Whoa. What an honor. Welcome. Welcome here. welcome to the team officially. Exclusive reveal. What a time. Oh my god. This is about to get ten billion views. Then what a reveal. Well, thank you. It's an honor. Great getting to know you. And uh yeah, this process has been nothing but fantastic for me. Uh so one thing I really enjoyed is at the very start there were all the, the YouTube clips of you know, people who were binging and, and doing things, you know, maybe making questionable decisions, you know, how did you, how did you go about picking those? And, and how did you, how did you find the interesting collection <laughs> of essentially bloopers, but you know, real life bloopers? Um, yeah. So that was something I think in the originals, in the original script, we, in the original script, Jordan wrote in real stuff happening that we would have to film like and and I just knew for budget purposes we'd never be able to recreate all those things. So um, early on, we we we, uh, we we struck a deal with a few different um, places to license their clips. Um, we I think we've looked through probably. I don't know. How many of you looked through Jordan? Jordan no. filtered a lot of them to me. So the and then, yeah, I have a friend, uh, Allie Maynard, who works at Ridiculousness. And so they they helped us out and they had a database of like, guy with a hat on runs into fire. Like you could just type that in and a video would <laughs> pop up. So we would like take the best of those. But yeah, we watched 100,000 videos. So one of the things, they, they would keep changing because one of the things that would happen is um, a lot of these videos nobody knows who the person was. It was just somebody else who like was filming them. So we, it was really challenging to get clearance mm-hmm. on a lot of them. So there were, there were ones that were really, really funny that we, we could not find. I mean, to the point where I posted one, like I posted one of a drunk guy with a dog humping his, like humping his head. 
and I put it out. I was like, can somebody please tell me who this person, who, who, who this person is? Because I want to reach out and say, can we put your, can we put this in a movie? Um, but yeah, we had to clear all, there was like, there's a lot of legal stuff we have to do. The most stressed I've ever seen Jeremy is when he was looking for the owner of that dog face humping video. He really wanted that <laughs> and we, we couldn't find it. So if you know yeah. anyone out there, please You call had to it. go through some dark, dark circles of the internet to try to find that owner. Yeah, really put us <laughs> in a dark place. I could just imagine that database just searching bad decisions and then just yep. pop. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to move into light spoilers, nothing major, but if you, if you haven't seen the film, it's on Hulu. So definitely go check it out. I'm going to talk about some of the specifics that happen. Um, you know, they're probably also in the trailer. Uh, but do you still have the pedal pub? Jeremy? The, the boosicle? The boosicle. As we yeah. call it. Um, <laughs> oh yes. We, we, we definitely have the boosicle for sure. Okay. Good. And we took uh, it out before we started shooting. We went to the bar with it, like the cast and crew all wrote it and it was a blast very easy to ride i i think we the reason why we did i think the reason i remember we added that in because of they're trying to figure out the rules and like the drive like we don't we didn't really want our guys to be driving and then we were just and we always thought like in the image i always just thought that was such a it was just such a ridiculous image um and jordan found a way to like make it really funny and make it work so yeah that was a really funny image and um I've, I've, and I've been on one before though they're they're really fun they go very slowly but they're a lot of fun I feel like that could be like that could be socially distanced enough right you just kind of make every other chair and you have to go promote promote the film that's a good idea we were actually oh maybe we should do it for the screening you maybe we should get those the oh the Hummer by the way Yaz it looks like Yaz is on this we should get the um, Pompano Mike's Hummer um, limo and we should get the boosicle and just have those at the screening that would be fun. You could watch it from the boosicle. It's out, open air. It's great idea. It's that, by the way, place. that's the funny, like that's the funniest part of the thing is like it's really great when you have like eight people, but when you have two people <laughs> driving really and hard. you're trying to go uphill, it's really hard. Yeah. yeah. You just you just pedal constantly and the thing is just going, Err. Yeah. Jo move. Jo Jordan actually wrote a whole monologue. Jordan's great at running like writing ridiculous monologues, but he wrote a great monologue about um about who invented it and like the history of the boosicle that event we had to just for length for we had just so much funny stuff to, that we had to take out and, and um you want to tell that story of how the boosicle was created or uh, am i, I setting you up to fail here yes you're setting me up for failure all i remember is that it's this is the funniest story. thing you'll ever hear yes. so you know this is the funniest thing you'll ever hear go Jordan. please funny. do it in character <laughs> <as well. laughs> Uh, no, I don't remember it. I remember there's someone named Connor Scolari from Manhattan Beach who wanted to find a way to drink with all his boys while at the same time not be confined by the spaces of a car or, or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's much better when Dexter said it in the movie. Unfortunately, uh, it got cut for time. But maybe the DVD. Do they still make those? Blu-ray? Criterion Collection? Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, right. I haven't outlawed those yet, so. We'll be there. Criterion. Um, so one thing I noticed is in one of the earlier scenes, uh, Andrew's character, or I guess Andrew, has a, an original Game Boy, and that kind of struck me, like, where did that come from, and, and why was it an original, like, 1985 Game Boy? I think that was, like, I, I might be wrong, George, and I might be recreating history here, but I, I seem to remember that was an Eduardo choice that he wanted to do and i think he's a big gamer and i don't know if it was really a character choice or the fact that he's been on lots of sets and like he just was like i just need something to do while i'm like during it like for the nine hours i'm gonna be uh, like filming and it's my not my coverage i'm just gonna be doing this the whole time um i don't really is, is I that think right? it was just his that was my memory of it he's like can i just use this in the scene and we're like yeah who cares <laughs> that's a level of detail that we went into for this movie there you go. Yeah, making sure everything is perfect. Yep, it has to make sense. Uh, I guess uh, uh, while we're on the, the subject of strange things, uh, is that dart crossbow a real thing? Because that was hilarious. I'd never seen anything like that. The dart crossbow. The the one that uh, Ed Eduardo uses. Yeah. Uh, so I so I did a kids show um, for Netflix called Best Worst Weekend Ever, and I basically like whatever there were a lot of things that I just put in there and, and, um, and that, I think we invented it for that kid's show, but 
I was like, oh, let's just use it again. It's it's a cool thing. Let's just use it again. Um, and then our prop, Paul Fox, our prop man, um, I think he built it, right, Jordan? Yeah, and he gave us a bunch of different sizes. He was like, do you want a full size? you want a mini? Or And we, you know, after much uh, scrutiny, we figured out the, the smallest one was funniest. Yeah, well, because we, we, again, like, we didn't want to make, we don't want to make a parody. You know, we, we wanted to create a crazy world, right? We wanted to create a crazy world, but really we wanted all the characters feel like real characters and like the the reactions to things should feel like grounded, real reactions. And we felt like if it was any, if those things were any bigger, they would kill these guys. And so, so we were actually just trying to find the perfect balance of, oh, this would really hurt, you know, and, and, you know, but if it, it won't kill, it won't kill you. So that was kind of our, 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 our tonally, that was sort of why we made the decision for the size of the gun. It sounds like that might've been kind of a mantra of, of the entire film. This would really hurt, but it won't kill you. It was kind of the, the that should be on the poster. That should be the tagline. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, so we mentioned a little bit about deleted scenes and, and things like that. It, you know, I, I imagine there must be a ton of really funny footage that uh, didn't make it in the film. Is there any plan to release it? Any any way to get that out to to fans of the film that want to kind of see more or just see some of the other crazy situations? Yeah, we've got um, you know our first our first cut of the movie. I think was was had an intermission. I mean, it was it was like four hours long. Um, Terrence we never. just had a lot of we have a lot of stuff that we just could not include just for just for pacing and time time um i believe that hulu has some really great plans on releasing um extra footage um releasing releasing the uh, deleted scenes um behind the scenes things um so so yes the answer is yes Oh, looking forward to that. Um, and then the last question kind of about the, the movie and the plot. The, the musical scene was hilarious. It was, it was you know, a highlight of the film for me. Uh, and then I noticed that uh, you had Travis Wall as your choreographer, who I, I love from So You Think You Can Dance. Uh, so I guess what was the music, I assume the musical scene was already it, was always in the film because there was a reference of it earlier. But I guess, you know, what inspired that? And I guess what was it like to work with Travis and, and the cast to kind of do this kind of silly musical number kind of right in the middle of the film? Uh, Jordan, you want to you want to speak to that at all? Or? Well, I think what we were when we got there, me and Jeremy were talking about. Oh, you know, in all these movies, you get to a certain point, and then people just start like talking about what happened or their problems and what they need to overcome. And we were like, well, what's the funniest way we could still do that, but it will be like an event of the film and have to do with the drugs? And so we came up with a huge musical. And then Jeremy had already done a musical, and you knew Travis from that, right? So you just called him up, and he was like, "Fuck yeah, I'll do it." Well, yeah, so Travis did the, so he did the, he, he choreographed the dancing scene in the wedding ringer uh, where, where, where Kevin Hart and Josh got dance in front of everybody. So I, I got to know Travis really well at that point. And um, you can catch the wedding ringer on Hulu uh, as well. Um, I actually Correct. don't know. If, I, I don't know if you can, but, but you can look <laughs> for it. You can look for it and you can find the bin. Um, so Travis is, you know, we just remain friends and I actually am, um, I'm, I have a musical that I've been working on with Alan Menken and Stephen Schwartz and Josh Gad um, that I've been working on for a long time and working with. And the idea, and, and Jordan hit on this, but but for me, I've seen drug trips in in so many movies where it's sort of like, oh, okay, we see we've seen this visual representation of of a, a drug, and and we really challenged each other to try and say what's the what's the most original way we can represent a, a, a drug trip? I never really want, I didn't want the effects to, of the drugs to feel like real effects to the drugs. You know, I wanted, I wanted to tell it in a more cinematic way. Plus I love, you know, I, I love music and musicals um, and the idea of, of working and writing this musical with, with Jordan and, and, um, and, and Chris Lentner to Matt Bowen, who, who I've worked with, both of those, you know, those guys are just musical geniuses. Um, there was, the original musical was probably 15 minutes long and so insanely wrong. It was like, a it, battle, it was insane. It was, it was, I mean, it was, we should probably release the very first cut. Like, it was so wrong. We literally just wrote every joke you could possibly write and, um, it was just 
super long. It was really funny though. I remember you called everyone into the kitchen of the high school and were like, you gotta listen to this. And then people were not expecting 15 minutes. And then I was just like, oh, this is still going where they're, they're talking about the dicks <laughs> for 15 minutes. Cause it was so when we first heard the music, it was just like, holy shit, this is, yeah. this is awesome. Someone spent time. By the way, we should find, I'm sure somebody filmed that. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere, I'm sure. That's crazy. And I feel um, like a, a binge extended cut would be a great way to, you know, release this maybe right around Oscar time. You could uh, you have a do binge it for extended your consideration. cut. Yeah. Listen, we're, we, we've been talking, we, no joke, we, we'll put this original song up against any of the, anything else that's out there right now so yeah. i would continue to try and push yeah a, if you're listening i would try to push yeah, push the song let's get it out there let's go have these guys perform want that oscar all right well so now we'll move into the lightning round questions uh those are just kind of questions that are kind of observations from the film things the characters that i want to see you know your relation to the characters Unfortunately for you all, you know, normally they're not as alcohol and craziness focused, but I, I, I got to take what I can get. And so the, yep. I'm, I'm, they're based on the binge. So, uh, you know, first question, you know, what was your first drink? And, oh, and you can choose to answer as much or as little as you want. You know, if you don't answer, that's perfectly fine. It's up to you. My first drink was um, absolute vodka uh, with Seth Mayer and Josh Aronson. We were 13 years old in Josh Aronson's, um, in Josh Aronson's shed. Mm. All right. My first drink was uh, Tangeray. I remember in Tom Grassman's basement, his brother gave it to us and it was so bad. I thought he put cologne in it. This was like, there's no way anyone would drink this. Thank you. I, I thought mine was, um, was, I thought it was like Noxzema. There was like skin pads that you, yeah. eat. I was just like, wait, what is this? Like Noxzema? Like not Noxzema. I forget what it was called, but anyway. Awesome. <laughs> what if you were going to binge, you know, what would your go-to drink be? I'll leave it at drink. You can choose to use something else, but I'll ask drink. You mean like what has the last three months been for uh, us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, 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 I love, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a whiskey guy. I've been drinking a lot of Bud Light seltzers. I love it. I love those seltzers. I love a Bud Light. I like the lime flavor best. I'm drinking a lot of them. Can't get enough. There you go. Maybe, maybe some cross branding could, uh, could yeah. happen. I think. Give me some free shit, Bud Light. <laughs> um, if you did oh, have hey guys, I, I I have to. I think I have to hop on this other thing. Oh, I'm so screwed up here. I'll um, finish the lightning yeah, round. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, as Alexa, do I have to hop on this this other phone interview right now? Yeah, you have two. What's that? You have two phone interviews. Look at this guy. Oh wow. Oh, so so do I have to? I have two phone interviews. Yeah, if you if you log off the Zoom, I'll call you on your cell and connect you. Okay. Well, you don't I, have to do uh, anything. <laughs> you were awesome, David. Thank you so awesome. much. Bye, Jordan. Bye, guys. Great talking to you. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Now that we got rid of the dead weight, let's really yeah. talk. I'm <laughs> sorry, you're the you kind of jumped off right when everything was getting interesting. I know. Um, you got nervous. So, if the binge was a real thing, where would you go? What would, what would your binge uh, odyssey be? I, I I think I would just stay home. I don't know. All this like pandemic stuff now, I'm just like, I kind of like being at home. I like drinking a couple seltzers and uh, falling asleep by nine. So I don't know. Maybe if I was younger, I would try and find a party, but now I would just go to sleep. That, sound, that sounds actually very healthy given, you know, some of the things you could be doing during the pandemic. I'm not a drug really. guy. I've never, that was the weird thing about all of us on set. It's like none of us had ever done drugs. Like we've tried weed and stuff, but it was pretty like calm set, surprisingly. <laughs> Good know. Um... So do you like hummus? I do like hummus. I love hummus. Um, that was a Vince original, I think. He, he came up with like, what if my character makes hummus? And we're like, that's genius. It's hilarious. And I don't even know why. And it was a, it was a very, uh, very detailed recipe that he had too, which was fun. Yes. Uh, have you ever done a handstand on a barrel of beer? I have done a keg stand, yes. I, uh, I'm not good at it. I have a tiny throat. I can't take a lot of beer. Um, so this was, you know, kind of a bunny, a buddy teen coming of age film. Did you have like a best friend slash partner in crime in high school? Uh, no, I didn't have that. I mean, I had a, a group, but I, I can't think of one person that I was like, that's my guy. And if I get separated, I'm going to be sad about it. I didn't have like that. I, I was connected to nobody is what I'm trying to say. Well, you know what? You showed all those people. But I actually, I mean, in the movie, my best friend in high school was named Hags, and so it's based on him. I guess I oh, should have said that. Perfect. So Hags is real. So you did have a best friend, just not 
a partner in crime. Yes, I wouldn't rely on him for anything for obvious reasons if you saw the movie. Um, so one thing I noticed, Griffin, Hags, you know, interesting nicknames. Did you have a high school nickname? Uh, no, even though my name is, my last name is Van Dyna, so it very easily could have been made fun of, but luckily I, I steered clear of most of it. Um, did you go to prom? I went to prom. Did you take a limo to prom? Yes, uh, I think it was a Hummer limo. I think that's where it was inspired from. And I remember nice. I was standing holding a probably a Bud Light or something and it stopped short and I tumbled forward and it was humiliating. That's my I only mean, memory. It was probably not the, the most humiliating thing from that night though, right? That's true, good point. Um, how did you ask your date to prom? Uh, in, in no way that was interesting. I just said, you want to go to prom? And that was it. There was Didn't no, have an exploding locker or anything? No, no promposal. It was very boring. Uh, can I hear your root beer goat? Root beer, sure. Uh, <laughs> I've never That's tried that. Actually. That felt pretty good. <laughs> oh, that was better. There we go. Um, can, I have, can I have a, car, a Scarface impression? Scarface. Uh, I've got nipples, fucker. Could you milk me? That's perfect. perfect. Yep. Go with it. <laughs> uh, have you ever lost an eyebrow? No, but I had a friend that his eyebrow was shaved and it didn't grow back for probably six months. It took a very oh long gosh. time. So that yeah. was that was actually an accurate statement in the movie. Yeah, it was based on uh, true events, historical events. Um, have you ever been punched in the face? No, never been hit. Have you ever punched someone in the face? Nope, I'm, I'm nonviolent. Uh, the, you can choose not to answer. What's sure. the worst autocorrect you've had happen when you were messaging someone? Uh, I don't, I don't, there's not one that jumps into my mind. I don't think I had any uh, vulgar slip ups that I can remember. Perfect. Well, you've lived a charmed life. Yeah, I, I have a blessed life. I've never had a bad autocorrect. Um, and do you live your life in a South Florida state of mind? Oh yeah. I mean, all the time I'm wearing, I mean, look at this. I'm drinking from a Tommy Bahama cup right now. Living like I'm uh, in Fort Lauderdale, having a having a blast. Yeah, and Bud Light Seltzer, that sounds like a South Florida drink. So That's me. That's who I am. And so if you entered the gauntlet, what would your team name be? My team name would be the, the Suck It Down Pipes, I guess. An it's iconic line. line. Put it on t-shirts. Uh, yeah, put, put it on t-shirts. No one will see it because no one's going out, but everyone can probably oh, yeah. have it. But, but yeah, I'll buy one. I'll buy one off Amazon. I like the best friend's name. I think that's probably what I would, I would have as mine. Best friends. It's, yeah, it's very sentimental. It's nice. So that's the, uh, that's the lightning round. I guess, you know, last question. Uh, you know, what's, what's next for you? I know that uh, the movie comes out next week. Uh, well, by the time this, this airs, it'll be, it'll be out, I believe. So, um, you know, what, what's next for you? Well, besides the massive fame from this movie coming out, I guess, uh, I mean, I'm writing on the reboot of Animaniacs, so that'll be out in November. Um, and then I sold a movie to Netflix called Cocaine Hippos. So there's a theme. There's a theme in my work, and it's drugs. Yeah, but you. Well, we'll we won't go into that. But yeah, interesting. Interesting that you uh, that you, that you live in that world. Your, at yeah. least your imagination does. Yes, the fun. People on drugs have fun. That's what I know. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This yeah. is this is a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Great time. And uh, for everyone watching, uh, The Binge is out on Hulu on August 28th. It's a, it's a really funny coming of age movie. It's a really good way to kind of spend your night and remember when we could go out and, and see people. Um, you know, maybe pass your, pass your nights by, have a Bud Light and Seltzer and go sleep by night. Have a little fun. Right. Thank All you right. so much. Take Bye. care. Bye.